Today we're gonna to take a look at my fixed blade collection. This is gonna be a long one. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. Fixed blades. I kind of mentioned in the past that after doing a knife collection video on my folders, I was like, maybe I'll bring you guys something on my fixed blades. I figured now is that time. Now I wanna preface this by saying I never intended on having this many knives, this like collection of fixed blades. On the other hand though, when it comes to folders, I have went out and bought knives specific for a collection, whether it was to support a creator, a knife maker, maybe I just wanted something for like the engineering behind things, but I never had that intention with fixed blades. So a lot of these were kind of bought or acquired in the same way. Early on, some of the first blades that I'll show you here, like this one, I bought this as just like a simple survival camp tool, kind of do it all, and I've used a lot of these. However, there are some others behind me here that I got as gifts from friends, and I haven't really used them, but I still hold on to them for some reason or another. So we're gonna kind of go through some of these blades, I'll tell you some stories about them, and I'll also give you some recommendations on a fixed blade if you're in the market for one right now. So first up, this was one of my very first fixed blades that I ever bought, and as you can tell, I have used and abused this thing for a long time. I believe I actually made a video on this knife in the past, and this is the SE6. This is probably one of their most popular knives for a good reason too. It has micarta scales. These things are really, really stout tools that you can just completely beat on. I've chopped this thing through wood, stuck it in campfires. I've done like all sorts of camping and survival tasks with this blade and I still love it to this day. Now this one used to live in my old van and it has not seen use in quite a while, but as you can tell, it's not even really rusted. It's been sitting in this sheath, injection molded. This came with it, has a little belt clip on there. And yeah, I just can't recommend a knife like this enough. This was one of my first fixed blades that I spent a decent amount of money on and it's still living today. You can't go wrong with SE. So speaking of that, while I was using that blade, I decided I wanted something bigger. This is probably one of the biggest blades in my collection right now. And this is the SE Jungleus or Jungleus, however you want to say it. So very similar in construction to the SE6, my car to handles on there. You can remove those and wrap it in paracord if you wanted to, but this is just a huge, almost like machete style blade. You have probably seen this in some older videos. There's one in particular that comes to mind. I crashed a drone in, I believe I was in Washington up in like the North Cascades. There was a lot of snow. I was driving the van and the drone got stuck like 50 feet up in a tree. So I went up and used this thing to cut a little branch off that way I could retrieve the drone. And as you can tell, this thing has a ton of wear on it too, but that's what's cool about a knife like this that lasts forever because it tells a story after a while. I don't even know how long I've had this thing, but it's still pretty sweet. Again, comes with a huge sheath. The retention on here is great. It's got some kind of loops and you can strap it to a pack or I guess you could even hip carry this if you wanted to, but it's not something that I've ever done. So those are two of my favorite and oldest fixed blades that I would still use to this day, but I've got a lot of other things that I've been using as of lately. Now, because I liked the Six and the Jungleus so much, I actually went out and bought this right here, the SE3. As you can see, I have not really even used this blade. I actually bought this to put on one of my tactical belts. It fit in perfectly next to all my mags and holsters and stuff like that really thin style blade on here. This would be good for even EDC, but it's just kind of like a do it all style knife. Again, micarta, it even has the orange inserts in there, just like the six and an injection molded sheath on here with a little metal clip to connect it to a belt, tack belt, whatever it may be. Great, great knives. Fit and finish on SE blades are amazing. It's even got a little striking pommel on there in case you need to hit something. If you're looking for a camping survival style knife, you really can't go wrong with this brand. And I still, to this day, highly recommend a lot of stuff from Essie. Now we're moving into kind of a weird category. Some knives that I've acquired some way or another. All of these have leather sheaths with them and they kind of tell a story in their own way. First up right here, this one I believe is called the Mini Hunter from Bear and Buck. 
Now I don't know a whole lot about this knife because I've never actually used it, but I believe I got this with some kind of subscription box a little while ago. This is one of the only Damascus, like full real Damascus blades that I own. And the reason that I still have this is because I found out some more about the company and I believe they started in Pennsylvania. They're probably still made in Pennsylvania and of course that's where I grew up. So. It's cool to see knives coming out of a place that I grew up in. I think this would be good as like a hunting skinning style knife because of the belly on the blade here. I've never been a huge fan of Damascus, but when you look at the different Damascus layers through the steel on here, it really gives me an appreciation for the craftsmanship that goes into making a blade that style. Nice sheath on there with a little leather loop on the back. That way you can run this thing on a belt. So keeping it local to PA, shout out to you guys. Next up, this one kind of has the same story. I believe this came in a subscription box. And again, I have not used it, but this is from a company called Real Simple Tools. This is their gut hook knife. Again, kind of along the lines of that hunting fishing aspect. So it does have the gut hook on the top. This thing has a huge belly on it. Nice wooden handle, pin construction through there. And this thing feels really good in the hand, but again, I'm not out there hunting and fishing very often or really at all. I haven't been hunting since I was probably 12 years old, but this is definitely like a huntsman style knife. Again, leather sheath with a loop on here. You could run it on a belt. So for any of you out there who are into hunting, these would probably be two pretty good options for you. Now, this guy right here, have not used this knife just like the others. However, the reason I'm holding on to this is because it's kind of special. So this is a knife from Smith & Wesson coming from their Performance Center. Again, a nice leather sheath with a snap buckle on there. You can run it through a belt. And this is the Performance Center Allegiance, I believe is what they called it. So kind of a high polish finish on there. Some kind of wooden style handles. I'm not even sure what kind of wood that is. Brass pin construction through here. And the reason that I am still holding on to this one is because this is a limited run. It's gonna be kind of hard to see on camera there, but this is number one of 1,000. So I was able to get the very first Performance Center knife of this style, the Allegiance. And this knife is really not my style. This is kind of falling into that like hunter, outdoorsman style category, which I am outdoors a lot, but I don't really gravitate towards knives like this. It does feel really good in the hand. I'm sure you could put a pretty good edge on it. This one is made out of 14C2N stainless. I've never even heard of that steel. So not something that I would gravitate towards, but it is cool that it is number one of 1000. So I'm kind of a sucker for serialized numbered products like that, especially when they're exclusive. So maybe this would be worth something someday. Probably not, but it's kind of a cool story that it is one of 1,000 and that again is gonna fall into this like hunter style category. Now next up, this is one that kind of has a story just like all of the folding knives that I have. I have so many because a lot of them were gifts from friends of mine. And this one right here, this is a Viking knife from Hele, Heli? Not exactly sure how you say it, but it's a Norwegian company. And this thing is super cool. I mean, it definitely reminds me of a Viking style knife. So my buddy Kurt gave this to me. He's like, my bearded brother, you need a Viking knife. And he gifted me this really cool fixed blade. I believe this is birch wood on the handle, but it kind of looks exotic. It has a really cool custom made leather sheath too. You can tell that these things are handmade and it looks like something that a Viking would probably carry. So it fits in there very nicely. And then there's this little bound of leather here, which you could strap this to a belt, really kind of old style knife. And I've actually not really used this blade for anything because it was a gift. I don't really want to beat on it and kind of destroy it, but it does have a nice bevel on there. This thing definitely get it very, very sharp, full tang all the way through there. So it kind of tapers down. Then you got that nice wooden handle on there. These things are still available. I believe you can get them on Blade HQ, maybe some other places as well. So this is a really cool style knife. And I guess I would just kind of put this into like maybe a EDC backpacking type of role. Maybe when you're like out in the wilderness, I'm definitely not going to throw this thing on my belt and walk around town. But if you are out in the woods, starting fires, maybe doing some food prep and stuff like that, the heli would be a cool knife for that. Now I've got one more back here that kind of fits into this like outdoor huntsman type of 
fixed blade. This is from the Montana Knife Company and this is known as the Marshall. This one was sent to my PO box because we have a mutual friend and they sent this to me to check out. I haven't used this blade out while camping or anything yet, but I will say that this thing feels great. It's got orange and black G10 handles on there. It has a finger choil up front so you can really choke up on it. And this blade is big. On their website, they say that you can use this for basically everything, digging, chopping, slicing, probably food prep, starting fires, things like that. And one of the main things that I like about this is the weight of it. It's balanced really well. And although it is a large knife, it actually does not feel like it weighs too much. This blade has almost a full flat grind on it right up until the spine of the knife there, which is something that I love look for in fixed blades. And then you got a Kydex sheath here, which is done really, really well. It's got a belt loop on the back, so you could run this thing on a pack or on your side if you chose to. The retention on here is so solid. That thing just snaps right into place and it is adjustable as well with a little screw on there. So this is definitely a knife that I would use, but I have so many fixed blades, which we'll kind of talk about here, that I'm using right now. So I haven't had the chance to test this, but Maybe I'll get around to that someday. Now we're getting into some blades that I know you guys have seen before, the Travax Trek knives. This one right here in particular, still in a leather sheath. And this one is an early, early Travax Trek. This is very similar to what you're seeing in production today. However, if you do have a production version, you may notice some very subtle changes. So this is a very early version of this knife. It's made out of S35VN. And I was stoked when Travax first created these knives because I love the fit and finish on all of their products. They have a really good warranty. I actually must have put an edge on this thing at some point because this thing is hair popping sharp. Now this is a fixed blade that kind of blends the line of what we were just talking about, an outdoor camping, maybe hunting style knife, but it kind of falls into the EDC category, at least for me. I did a video in the past when these first released about every day carrying a fixed blade for 30 days, and that was before I did it like I do now. I carry fixed blades a lot now, but this was one of the first knives where I actually had it on my belt instead of a folder. So this is actually an older version of the sheath. So you can tell by looking at the back here, it's just a single belt loop that goes through, which allows you to kind of wear this thing vertically like this on your side. But now if we fast forward to a newer style, the leather on this guy is much nicer. It is black. It really feels like the leather that you will find on their wallets. And you will notice that you could run it vertically or horizontally too, depending on how you run your belt through here. Now this version of the Trek in particular is how they are coming today. However, this one's a little bit different because I got a kind of black version of the Trek. And I think I might have shown this on a video in the past and these were kind of exclusive if you are a part of the Travax Discord group. I'm actually working with Travax on some new things, kind of like what you see right here. So I'll be bringing you guys an EDC update and some new Travax product videos in the future. But this knife actually lives in my truck and I kind of use it for just odds and ends. When we're at a campsite, I actually have another one of these in my camping gear. So for a while I was using these for mainly food prep. I think this is a really good food prep knife. It's light, it's balanced really well. And the fit and finish of the sheath and the knife itself is just phenomenal. Now while we're on the topic of like weird exclusive stuff, I've had this knife for a long, long time, like probably about as long as the original Trek knife. And I was told not to show it in the past, but I think that time has come and gone now. So here is a legit black, black version of the Travax Trek. I don't know what this coating is. I'm assuming it's some kind of DLC. I don't think it's Cerakote. And then you will notice on the blade there, it has my old school signature logo on there. So we thought about making these and releasing them. However, it never came to fruition because there was, I believe, a problem with getting these black. But I do have a black Trek, like black, black. And I made a custom Kydex sheath when I was visiting my buddy Roger out in Vegas. So this thing just kind of lives in my EDC gear drawer behind me here. Never really use it for anything, but tells a cool story of how long I've been working with Travax. So now we are moving down the line, kind of getting into some smaller fixed blades. So let's take a look at some of the smallest fixed blades that I have. First up, I believe I may have shown this in a recent mail time video. This is one of the newer fixed blades in this collection. Super tight sheath on there. This is the Wesson Bornos. It's a very, very small fixed blade, but fit and finish on it is what you would expect from a Wesson style 
folding knife. I have a few of the Wesson folding knives in my big old box there in my collection, and this one feels really good. I guess this was kind of getting into that like EDC style of fixed blade. However, it is very small. Like I can really only get a three finger grip on there. Very short blade and then a sheath, which has really good retention. And then it just has some eyelets and then like a little bit of a pass through here. So you're not really gonna be able to put this thing on a belt unless you kind of fashion some kind of connection of your own on here. But this one does have really nice aluminum scales. I've never even cut anything with this other than in the mail time video. I think I might have opened some packages with this in the past. So this is kind of getting us into that like everyday carry style of fixed blade. I believe these are on pre-order still to this day, depending on when you're watching this video, of course, but they should be shipping this fall. So like very soon you guys can get your hands on one of these. Next up, a very similar style knife, but maybe you guys already kind of know what this blade is right here. So this is from a buddy of mine, Pete, Peter McKinnon. Some of you in the knife community would know him from the Pete's Pirate Life over on Instagram. And this is one of his Pete Pirate Knife custom fixed blades. This is a really cool kind of stylized knife. So it has a really nice texture and some brass fittings on there. You can see his Pirate Life logo on the blade. It does have a little bit of a lanyard hole on the back here. And there are brass inserts between the handle and the actual blade material. This is S35VN. This is number 56. I believe Pete released a hundred of these. Has some really good jimping on it. And this is not a knife that I have carried. Again, because it's kind of into that like collector style thing, but a little bit more of a handle on here than the Wesson blade. So I can get a full kind of full fist grip on there. The back of the knife just barely sticks out of my hand there. And this is definitely getting into the style of fixed blade that I would carry. Again, you have the eyelets on the sheath. I would have to put something like an ulti clip on there if I really wanted to carry this in a good fashion. But really cool knife from a super rad friend of mine. Pete, if you're watching this, I appreciate you, man. This thing is sick and I'm excited to see what you release in the future. Next up, this is the only knife blade style thing that I completely forget the maker and the name of this thing, but this was a gift from my buddy, Mickey Shook. Some of you guys know him as Carry Trainer. And I got this at his S12 event years ago. If you guys know what this is, you can drop it in the comments down below, but this is a G10 self-defense style tool. This thing is super freaking pokey. It's a really cool tool. And Mickey was friends with the guy who actually makes these. So a lot of us who were there filming and instructing and things like that, he gave us these as a gift. And I have carried it a few times. I just kind of drop it in my pocket, but it does have a big loop on the sheath here. So the best way to do this would be to actually put paracord around it and then tie it to your belt. That way when you draw this thing out, it's gonna come straight out of the sheath. And this thing is going to poke holes in most things. It's really surprising what you can do with a little piece of G10 like this. It's got a big G10 bead on the back here. So it gives you something to kind of pull against. And I apologize for forgetting the name of this and who actually makes them, but Hopefully one of you guys will know and you can drop it in the comments down below. Or if I remember, I'll just drop it down there as well. Now, speaking of G10 blades and self-defense and things like that, these will probably jog your memory a little bit. Right here is a G10 version of kind of like a push dagger. And in the past, these were made by a company known as Colonel Blades. Now I have found out recently that some things kind of got weird with this company and they actually started under a new name because there's another Colonel Blades it's kind of like ripping off what they were doing. So the original designer of this blade, Al, I've actually trained with him a few times at the S12 event. The dude's from Philadelphia. He's really cool, badass dude. I really like his thought process when it comes to knife fighting and self-defense. So this at the time is a Colonel blade made out of G10. It has some kind of like cordage wrapped around the handle. Al is still making blades to this day, but it's under regiment blades now. So if you guys are interested in any of these search regiment blades and you should be able to find them. Right here is another version, a dagger. And this was when I was super into the multicam phase of my life. So G10 handles on here, multicam dagger style blade on this one. And if you've watched some of my old videos where Al was in there, we were kind of training and he was kind of talking about his methodology of how to fight with a blade like this. It's really cool. 
I'm really not one to carry a blade for self-defense. However, it is nice that if you do have a blade, you can use it for self-defense as well. And then this one I've probably carried the most. This is just like a standard version of their blade. So just a single blade on there, but it is not sharpened to an actual blade, but kind of to a point on the top. So it's crowned super deep. If you ever get the chance to meet Al or train with him, you will really have a higher understanding for a type of blade like this. Essentially, you're just throwing punches with a giant pokey dagger out the front. So I've talked about these things a lot in the past. I even have a folding knife that they made at one time. So you kind of push on this ring here and it pops a blade out. I carried that thing for a while too. So really cool blades. And I still like holding on to these just because of the memories that I have of dealing with Al and Mickey, learning about how to actually use these blades effectively. So these are some pretty cool self-defense style fixed blades. Now, speaking of self-defense, we're kind of looking at like military law enforcement style blades now. This is a collaboration blade between RE Factor and Bastinelli, which is a bladesmith. And they're calling this one the GI. So this one kind of has like a signet ring on the back of it. I remember the very first time I pulled this thing out of the box, I stuck this point directly into my thumb. And I mentioned that that G10 blade will poke holes in anything. This one will do it even better. Now there's a lot of thought that went into this blade, the GI. It has G10 handles and if you are reverse holding it, there's actually three different points of jimping down the blade depending on how you are actually holding this blade. So if you are holding it like normal, just kind of using it as an EDC blade, there's some jimping way up here on the spine. There's some in the middle, but again, if you are holding it reverse grip, all of your fingers are touching jimping at some point. So this thing really feels locked in. I'm not a huge fan of rings on blades. However, this one, it kind of works for it. I'm not here to tell you guys how to use a blade in self-defense, but I am not a fan of running your finger through here. This is really just to kind of do something else with your hands. But if you are in a self-defense situation, this could kind of get you in trouble in some places. But again, I'm not here to talk about that. The sheath on this thing is really nice. It has a cool belt hook on here, so you could put this thing on kind of like a tactical style belt. Again, military and law enforcement guys. Or you could drop this into your pocket and kind of run it as just like a everyday self-defense blade if you carry a blade for self-defense. Now we're moving up into a larger style, definitely military inspired blade here. This was a collaboration between Shooting Surplus and Tor Knives, and this is known as the First Blood. I'm not sure if these are still available. I had this knife for a while. I think I opened it in a mail time video a long time ago but this is a large blade. Again, definitely military inspired here. So this is going to be for, it's kind of like a combat knife, honestly. It kind of reminds me of like a new age K-Bar. So everything that you could think a K-Bar was used for. Speaking of that, I don't have any K-Bar knives in my fixed blade collection. That's kind of a problem, isn't it? But anyway, Tor Knives made this blade for shooting surplus and the G10 fit and finish on here is amazing. One detail that I really like is that on the G10 handle here, they kind of ground this little groove into it and it fits your finger perfectly when you are reverse holding this knife. Your pinky kind of falls right in there. So the thought and design behind this blade is definitely spot on. Again, not a knife that I'm really gonna use for anything. I'm not going into combat, but you could really beat on this knife. It has a really thick stock to it and has really aggressive jimping on the back. So fighting style knife, if you want a really big blade, this would probably be right up your alley. This one comes with a Kydex sheath. The retention on here is absolutely great. So if you're strapping this thing to a plate carrier or a belt, something like that, this thing has no wiggle to it at all and it's not gonna come out of there. Now that's about all that I have for self-defense style fixed blades. Again, I'm not one to carry a knife for self-defense very often, but if it's something that can kind of fit into that role, that's cool. So right here I have two hatchets. These are kind of like fixed blades, so I figured I would throw them on the table as well. This one I have had for a long, long time, like probably as long as I've had my SE fixed blades. And I believe this one is called the SOG Fast Talk. This was actually a gift from my buddy Brett when I was back in high school, I believe, maybe like early college days, but he got this for my birthday. And I've actually used and abused this little kind of hatchet tomahawk. It's got a pretty small blade on there, and then you'll notice there's some knurling right in the center on both sides. So you can actually use this thing as a hammer, hammer tent stakes into the ground. And then it's got more of a blunt edge on the back there for just really destroying stuff. Now I've used this thing around campsites, mainly just for fun. I have found myself throwing this thing like a tomahawk into trees from very far away. So this is just kind of like a fun style hatchet 
tomahawk. It's got a polymer handle on here. There is surprisingly no wiggle room on the head and this thing has hit the ground hard multiple, multiple times. This is one of the only things that I own from SOG. I really don't have any of their fixed blades or even folding knives for that matter. But this thing has definitely been through the paces and it has this little sheath on the head there with some snaps. I've had this thing for a long, long time and I still enjoy the fit and finish of this thing. It just feels really good. As soon as you put this thing in your hand, you just really want to throw it. So it's kind of what it's made for. And then this guy right here I got about a year ago and this is handmade from Tipton Hill Forge. These were made for a company known as Flare Space that makes the flares for vans like on my Storyteller. And this was an exclusive item that was sold on Flare Space's website. You can see that mirror polish on the edge of the blade there. I haven't actually used this thing while we were out camping but it did live in my van for a little while. The construction of this head is pretty cool. It's kind of folded around and then they obviously hammer a stake in the top to kind of make things nice and tight. The handle of this hatchet feels amazing and I should probably use this thing at some point or another. But I love the handmade aspect of this. You can tell that someone put a lot of time and effort into making this thing come to life. And then it's got an edge cover here. Again, hand sewn leather with a little snap. So there's some really, really nice craftsmanship with this little hatchet here. So I figured I would just throw that into the mix. Now we're getting into some more recent stuff, or recent to me. They're honestly kind of newer style blades, and these are from TJ Schwartz, or Knife Designer, over on Instagram. I've talked about this blade in the past. This is the Overland Knife. And as you can tell, I love this thing because I've used it quite a bit. TJ spec this one out for me with orange G10 handles on there. And the cool design behind this knife is the way the blade is positioned in relation to the handle. So you'll notice that when I put my thumb on the jimping here, the blade sits a lot lower and this thing is used quite often by me at camp for food prep. It has a really nice grind on there and if you are chopping on a cutting board, you will notice that the blade will touch before your knuckles hit the cutting board or the table. These things are completely customizable over on his website. So here I have a gray sheath with black eyelets, a little belt loop on there. I've talked about this thing in the past and this thing rides in my Tacoma all the time. Now newer than the Overland knife is the Confidant from TJ Schwartz. This is a really cool blade as well. You will notice that I have not really used this thing, but this is going to kind of fit into that hunting fishing style a lot more than the Overland knife does. It has a pretty good belly on the blade there, so this would be good for skinning and any kind of like backpacking, camping style tasks. But mainly I can see this thing being used for like gutting a deer, cleaning any kind of game that you get when you're out hunting. The G10 on this one has a little bit of a different texture and I really like this blade, but I haven't really used it because the Overland is always riding with me. Same style sheath on here. It's got a little drain hole that way. If this thing is getting wet, if you're maybe cleaning out a fish in a river, you can just simply throw this thing back in and any water, blood, dirt, debris, it's gonna drain out the bottom, so. Really cool blades coming from TJ there. And now we're getting into the good stuff. This is where my love for fixed blades really took off with Two Feathers Productions. If you guys have not seen any of the blades that I've been carrying from Ryan at Two Feathers, you're probably very new to the channel, but I have a lot of Two Feathers blades here and we're gonna kinda run through the story just a little bit. Give me a second while I move all of these blades over to the table. I definitely have more of Ryan's blades, fixed blades, than any other knife maker out there. Now I've already told this story so I'm going to keep it short, but I was back in Pennsylvania visiting family about two years ago, right around this time. It's been like two years and two weeks now since I met Ryan. I was at a gas station and he was kind of eyeing me up in line. He's like, Talon. I was like, yeah, what's up, man? He's like, hey, I watch your videos. I know you're into blades. I actually make knives just down the road from here. Turns out he's a knife maker right from the area that I grew up. So I went over to his shop and I was checking out all of his blades. He wanted to make one custom for me. So I asked him, what's your most popular design right now? And that is this guy right here, the 2F7. So I said, if you want to make me a blade, I would definitely love to check that thing out. It's kind of like a do it all camping style knife. This one lives in my Tacoma. And while we were there, I was checking out a bunch of blades. He decided to make me this one, but he also sent me another one at the same time because he saw me kind of gravitating towards this one as well. So I didn't ask him to make me this, but I'm very glad he did because this blade right here kind of leads into everything else on the table in front of me. So first up, the 2F7. You guys have seen this on my channel a bunch before. I use and abuse this thing. You can see there's kind of some 
patina on the blade there. I've sharpened it maybe only one time before. And in the past two years since Ryan has made me this knife, he has actually refined the design of the 2F7. It's a seven inch blade, hence the name. And the newest version of the 2F7 is even cleaner than this thing. So Ryan's definitely perfecting his craft over the past couple of years. And you'll be able to tell as we kind of jump through these blades. So this 2F7 came with a Kydex sheath and a nice leather strap on the back. So that way you can fashion this thing to your belt. Again, this thing lives in my truck and I use it all the time for processing firewood and all sorts of camping tasks. Now the blade that I was eyeing up and he sent me without me really knowing was this guy right here. This is the Two Feathers Workhorse. And again, I've had this thing for two years. When he sent me the 2F7, I started using that. And this was one of the first fixed blades that is very large in my opinion to carry every single day but I began carrying this thing and I had it in my pocket for all sorts of adventures. It's a simple Kydex sheath with an ulti clip on there. And believe it or not, I would slide this thing in my front right pocket next to my cell phone and this was my everyday carry blade for a while. Then Ryan and I became friends. We were talking more and more. I was kind of giving him feedback on how I was using the blades and things like that. And I asked him, could we make something like the workhorse, but just a little bit smaller, a little more pocket friendly. So that is when this blade right here came to life. A lot of you guys know this as the original mini workhorse. So this was the first collab fixed blade that I did with Ryan. Super thick quarter inch steel on there, G10 handles with the black and gray. And the design behind this was just like I said, we basically took the workhorse and shrunk it down to make the mini workhorse. We have some different style handles on here and that's something that you can kind of change depending on what you like. But this was the very first collab blade that we ever did together. And I carried this thing for a long time until we started making some different variants of it. Speaking of different variances, right here is a lighter version, a 3 16 mini workhorse. You can tell that this one Definitely has some patina on the blade there. The more you use these things, especially when you get them into like acidic type of stuff, if you're cutting fruit with it or just getting it wet, it's going to change the color of the ferric finish on here. There's a ferric acid finish. So this one is a lot slimmer, a lot lighter than the quarter inch version. And this thing is still super bomb proof. This is kind of like a mini pry bar, super thick. It feels crazy in your hand. And this one is probably a little more practical for people. And I still carry this knife occasionally in my pocket. Again, Kydex sheath with the ulti clip on there. Can't go wrong with a mini workhorse. Now, when we launched the mini workhorse, we sold a lot of them very quickly and Ryan was overwhelmed for a while. So we didn't really make anything new until all of those orders were fulfilled. I believe it was about like nine months. And that is when I went back to the shop and we came up with this guy right here. This is the mini tack horse. This is a 3 16th version. And of course it has a Tonto point on there. So secondary bevel, this is definitely going to be more into like a self-defense style role. But again, still a really good EDC blade. I know a lot of people who are into the mini workhorse like carrying blades for self-defense. So I figured this would be a cool kind of like secondary iteration of the blade. And this is another one that I've carried for a while. This is really when my idea of carrying a fixed blade really came into the picture. Before this, I would carry a fixed blade here and there when I was outside up in the woods. I carried that Trayvax Trek for a while, but this is when I really kind of ditched my folders and started carrying fixed blades full time. So between the mini workhorse and the mini tack horse, that's when I was carrying a lot of them. Now, this one was just kind of a fun project. I actually just kind of referenced this recently in a video two weeks ago, but this was a little idea that we had. We took the handle of the mini workhorse and made a mini cleaver. So I have one of these, Ryan has an original one as well. And then I believe he made three more of these mini cleavers and they sold on his website very quickly. It's obviously like a mini meat cleaver. So it's a Warncliffe style blade and it's good for, I don't know, it's more of like a novelty than anything else, but it's sharpened to a slope that is a little bit sharper than a razor blade. So there's a micro bevel on here and this thing is super sharp. I actually took the Kydex sheath on here and put two little button snaps. So I have carried this outside the waistband, kind of just like a, I guess any kind of fixed blade, most people are carrying them outside the waistband, but this is a really cool blade. There's not many of these out there. It was just like a fun little side project that we did. And that is the side two feathers mini cleaver. 
And then we jumped into refining a lot of these designs. So right here is a newer version of the mini tack horse. And you will notice that Ryan started putting a new handle on the end there. So it kind of has this like reverse swoop on there. And if you know Ryan and his blade making, it really stemmed from him throwing these knives. So he kind of implemented that there because it made it easier to throw. I really like the look and design of it. It makes the pommel of the knife stick out a little bit further and it fits perfectly with a Tonto style blade like this. So this is when he started kind of refining the designs and they're even more refined than this right now. By the way, I haven't really mentioned blade steel throughout this video, but a lot of these blades, at least the ones in front of me, are either 1095 or 5160. They're both very common steel choices for knife makers out there. And that type of steel, when heat treated properly, it's going to make a really resilient work style knife. You can tell that I've used all of these blades. They're just patina it up and kind of scratch and this and that. But that is the whole point of a knife like this. Now here's one that I don't think I've ever shown, but this was something that Ryan was trying out. This is when he slimmed up the mini workhorse and he actually put a sort of rounded style handle on there. I think this is probably the only one that he's ever made like this. And I actually every day carried this for a little while too because it is a little bit slimmer. It kind of feels a little more like polished. These knives with their kind of blocky handles feels like a work knife. And this one was just a little more gentleman-like. Same style sheath on here with the ulti clip. And I don't think these will ever come out because making these rounded G10 handle scales is a lot of work. So the price would have to go way up. But it is a really nice feeling knife. Kind of good for a little bit of everything. I think I might actually carry this one today. And then jumping into the one that we made last winter, this is the Warning. This is another blade that I designed with Ryan. So we took a Warncliffe style blade and like a reverse Tonto point on there. We crowned the point, I even put jimping on the back. And this one is cool to me because it has micarta handles, it has orange inserts there in between the actual tang of the blade and the handle material and I actually made this knife myself. I was at Ryan's shop for like a week and he kind of walked me through the whole process of bringing a blade like this to life. So cutting out the blank and then normalizing and heat treating, grinding bevels, crowning, just like fit and finish of everything. So I actually, I would say that I did like 90% of bringing this knife to life. Ryan was of course overseeing me through all of that. So this one is pretty special to me and I carried this one for a while. One thing that we changed on this was the sheath. We actually put the ulti clip right in the middle, which made it a lot easier to carry in your pocket rather than having it offset. So I'm not sure how many of these are out in the wild. Ryan took the blank from this and created a few of them. So some of you out there may have a warning. This one is just special and unique because it's a little bit thicker, the different handle material with the micarta on there. Absolutely love this blade as well, mainly for that story. And now fast forward to two knives that I have not shown you guys yet from Ryan, but these are even newer iterations of both the Mini Workhorse and the Mini Tack Horse. Ryan made me these as a gift because he just passed three years in business. So he made both of our like most well-known collaboration blades. Right here is the Mini Workhorse, but it has some changes to it. So you'll notice the spine up there has crowning on it. It has a little bit of a thumb ramp in the mix there, which makes this thing feel really great in the hand. Micarta handles orange G10 pins through the tang of the blade there, and these are some of the nicest knives that I have seen Ryan make. A lot of the stuff at his shop recently have this same style of fit and finish, and you can just tell looking at this blade compared to the very first one that he's made me, he's perfecting his craft, like I mentioned. So I have not carried this thing yet. This was a gift that he just gave me back in, I think it was the end of August. And then of course we have the Tack Horse version as well. You'll notice the little orange accent in there, the 2F logo. Same thing, Micarta G10 handles with the crown on the back of the spine, a little bit of a thumb ramp. And this thing just feels so damn good in the hand. I don't know if I'll carry these because I have a lot of other blades to carry, obviously. I think I am gonna throw this like one-off version in my pocket for the day. And yeah, this is a lot of what I carry right now, fixed blades. So this thing just rides right up here in my front pocket. Snap that down and then whenever you need a blade, it's right there, ready to go. Really easy to resheath or reholster because of the wide opening on these. And then I guess last but not least, of course, I released a video on this guy last week. When I was visiting Ryan, we came up with this monstrosity right here. So 
kind of a mixture of like the mini cleaver, but turned into more of the ultimate camp tool. This thing is super thick, super heavy out towards the end, great for chopping. We're calling this one the Ignite, and I think Ryan's actually gonna bring these to life. So if you wanna check out the full video on this camp tool, I did kind of like a initial build and testing video of this thing with Ryan when I was in Pennsylvania. Absolutely love this thing. I'm going camping tomorrow and I'm gonna bring this thing out there with me to really put it through the paces once again. Other than just random testing, I'm gonna use this thing as I would in the real world. Put some paracord on the uh, edge cover there. This paracord is actually pretty cool. It's got fishing line and a fire starter in there mixed with some of the regular paracord thread. So kind of like multi-purpose survival ultimate camp tool. Love this thing. I can't wait to see these come to life. So that is all that I had for my fixed blade collection. I warned you guys in the beginning this is gonna be a long video and pretty sure I've been talking for like a half an hour now. Now if you guys have any questions on these blades, let me know in the comments down below. As far as links, I'm not gonna be able to link to absolutely everything here, so just kind of search the name that I mentioned if you are interested in learning more about the specs, the blade material and stuff like that with anything that you saw in front of me or behind me here. Now, I believe that's all that I had. I gotta put some of these blades back into my truck and get the truck ready to head up into the mountains tomorrow. And next up will be a camping video with my buddy Mike. Now, if you're new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every single week. As always, thank you for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.